way we've always operated since 2005 when I got in the league is if a quarterback can see the defense and is accurate, then you just see if he can throw it 60 yards. I think he, he might have had a 55-yarder today, but um, that's why you hear no uh, cause for concern at all from the players because they know that too. One month ago, we got one of the most unusual viral clips that I honestly think we've seen all off season long. And believe me, I've seen a lot of very strange clips go viral. But in this instance, we saw Tua Tonga Viola drop back after a play action and heave a deep ball to Tyreek Hill who had to step back in order to get it. So for the most part, Miami Dolphins PR did a wonderful job because well, a lot of people People saw this, but as a result, Tua was heavily scrutinized by the entire media. And ever since then, we've been seeing a lot of his teammates and head coaches coming out to defend him. And I figured I'd summarize the entire Tua Tonga Viola question into one video. Yeah, a guy that could barely pronounce his last name is giving you information about him. Go figure. Before we get to the content, make sure you check us out on Patreon. We drop exclusive documentaries there. And make sure you drop a like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to help the channel grow. Now that we get all that out of the way, break! As far as accuracy wise, I'm going with Tua all day. So which one would you rather have? The deep ball where you got to scramble around the field to try to go find it? Or do you uh, want that accuracy to hit you right in the bread basket on the run? I want it to hit me right in the bread basket, just like I did in the Buffalo Bills game and take it 70. And the rest is history. And again, this is not a shot at anybody. Right. This is just stuff that had to be said. It right? needed to be said. It needed so to be said. said. Um, but she brings it up just, you know, just so I'm aware with the questions that you guys are gonna ask me. You know, for me it's just zone that out. I mean, we come out to practice, everyone else. Twitter warriors, you know, keyboard warriors, whatever you want to call them. You know, they're not out here practicing with us working hard. So I don't know if you guys reported that last one to Tyreek, but. Yeah, a lot of shooting. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that looked like money. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Look, I wanted to open this video by saying I am buying all of the Tua Tonga Viola hype. I mean, I understand there's a lot of people out there that think that Tua isn't the right quarterback to get the job done for the Miami Dolphins. And hear me out. First of all, the Miami Dolphins are loaded at each and every position, primarily due to the fact that Tua is on a rookie scale contract. This roster has been constructed remarkably, and the head coaching decision of Mike McDaniel Daniel is one that I am totally on board with. Every bit that Tua develops this year, in my opinion, is a bonus, but I feel like for the most part, his deficiencies might get masked by Mike McDaniel. At the very worst, I think we're looking at a Jimmy Garoppolo clone here, and that's at the very, very worst scenario. I mean, if you look at a bunch of the statistics that we got from Tua so far, it doesn't necessarily look so bad for him, which we're gonna get to in just a sec. So you might be wondering, Mike, why on earth are people coming at Tua the way that they have been recently. Well, in the very brief period of time that we saw Tua play football, which bear in mind, Tua has only started in 21 games for the Miami Dolphins throughout his two-year career. So for the most part, he has a little bit over one season of experience with a prior head coach. And to be honest, his statistics aren't necessarily that bad. I mean, there's something to work with here, even at a very basic statistical level. He had a 68% completion percentage last year, threw for 16 touchdowns and 10 interceptions. And I think most importantly, Miami Dolphins clearly were a significantly better team when Tua was on the field. And this is at a very, very basic level. I think what threw a lot of people off is the fact that the Miami Dolphins traded for Tyreek Hill, which they had the assets to go all in on Tyreek Hill. If you think about it, I mean, this is a team that has been doing a remarkable job with asset management since the moment that they drafted Laramie Tunsil and traded Minka Fitzpatrick. I mean, this team rebuilt their roster in the right right way. The only thing that I feel a little iffy about is the way that they let go of Brian Flores because I actually feel like Flores was working on something special there, but I think that may have had more to do with something behind the scenes, or you could just see it the way Brian Flores is seeing it. I don't know, whichever side of the spectrum that you guys are seeing it. I personally think that it was a behind the scenes thing with Brian Flores and Tua Tagovailoa and the fact that Brian Flores didn't see eye to eye with ownership with the way they wanted.
wanted to do things. But I think Mike McDaniel was a remarkable hire at that. But I think the Miami Dolphins main issue is after they traded for Tyreek Hill, obviously a lot of people are going to be making fun of the fact that Tyreek Hill decided to go from having Patrick Mahomes as his quarterback to the Miami Dolphins and having Tua Tungaviola as his quarterback, which with all due respect to Tua, I mean, maybe he could prove something otherwise this year is clearly a downgrade with respect to Tua. Unless if he has a remarkable breakout this year. Now, I don't mean any disrespect to the guy, but when you have Tyreek Hill coming in and citing this as the reason why he joined the Miami Dolphins. It's tough. It's tough, man. But if somebody comes to you with a lot of money, it, it, it changes. It changes. The feelings start to change a little bit. And you clearly start to think that obviously when Tyreek Hill is defending his quarterback like he is here with this tweet saying, can y'all chill or not? We're talking about practice. Clearly people are going to think that obviously Tyreek Hill is defending his current QB as he should, but he was mainly financially incentivized to join the Miami Dolphins to begin with. Not to say that he was selfish for doing so, because honestly, if I was in his situation, I probably would have done the same thing. But a lot of people are probably questioning whether or not Tyreek Hill is actually buying everything he's saying about Tua. I mean, it's nothing, it's nothing weird. You know, at first I thought it was going to be something crazy, the ball going all over the place. But Tua actually has, you know, probably one of the prettiest balls I've ever caught in my life. So um, it's, it's very catchable. I don't want to continue because the more I talk, the more it sounds weird. So it, Tua is a... He's a very accurate quarterback, that's all I'm saying. So you have Tyreek Hill coming out and saying that Tua has one of the prettiest balls he's ever caught in his entire life. You're having Tyreek Hill consistently defend his brand new quarterback, and you obviously have Tua being very frustrated at the amount of critics that he has as well. I think my favorite thing that Tyreek Hill has said to defend Tua so far, and don't get me wrong, there's been a lot of interesting ways he's defended Tua, is the fact that he went on Good Morning Football and said, I I just want people to understand that I went for 150 yards with Matt Moore as my QB versus the Minnesota Vikings. I love Matt Moore, but Tua is 10 Matt Moores. This is such an interesting way to defend a guy. It's like, this man is 10 Matt Moores. And I'm gonna be honest, Matt Moore was a pretty solid quarterback throughout his career. So that's a pretty good compliment. I mean, it's just such an interesting way to say it. I, this is pretty much Tyreek Hill saying, hey, it doesn't matter who my quarterback is. I still am able to succeed. I guess this is just his way of saying it without insulting to us. Just a very interesting word choice here. Now, let me give you some statistics so you could come to your own conclusion about whether or not Tua is the right quarterback for the Miami Dolphins. I'm going to preface this by saying it's impossible to do this without speculating. I mean, a lot of Tua's data is either from a half season where he didn't necessarily have the best weapons around him in 2020, and then last year where he sustained an injury that kind of threw off his momentum. But when he did play, the Miami Dolphins were a significantly better team. So take a look at this. In 2021, Tua was ranked sixth in deep ball accuracy, 12th in under pressure accuracy, and fifth in clean pocket accuracy. You might be thinking that he may have gotten a lot of his yards from the fact that his his receivers were able to gain a significant amount of receiving yards after the catch, but that couldn't be further than the truth. His cast was 73rd in reception yards after the catch. In 2020, Tua was first in the NFL with accuracy rating with a 7.89, and in 2021, he was tied for third in the NFL with a 7.98. So yeah, Tua might not have the greatest cannon of an arm, but I feel like when you put the right pieces around him at the end of the day, I'd rather have a quarterback that is accurate with ball placement as opposed to a quarterback that could heave the ball 80 yards but potentially throw an interception. But I'm also seeing instances where Tua can throw the deep ball. It's not necessarily going to be his go-to, but if it's there, he's not afraid of taking that shot and making that exact throw. And there's been instances of that in the past. Now, whether this is a skill that he could hone in on throughout his career or not is a different conversation for a different day. But I do think the 
pieces are there for Tua to actually break out this year and even have the Miami Dolphins become Super Bowl contenders. Now, is that likely? It's kind of difficult to say because there's so many unknown variables at play here. There's so many brand new pieces for the Miami Dolphins. And if every single thing happens to work out from Teron Armstead not getting injured to Tua being able to click with Mike McDaniel and Mike McDaniel being the right head coaching hire and that offense working on all cylinders, I think that this is a team that could make a deep postseason push. I don't think it's necessarily a team that could win their division, but at the same time, last year, no one would have anticipated the Cincinnati Bengals making a run to the Super Bowl. So I'm saying if the Cincinnati Bengals were able to make the jump that they made, just based upon Joe Burrow performing really freaking well, despite all the issues they had with their offensive line, despite them going into the season with a wide receiver who was rumored to be having dropping problems, then I could see the Miami Dolphins putting it all together and surprising some teams this season. I think that's their ceiling. But at the same time, I could see this entire team crumbling, and that's why there's significant amounts of pressure on Tua. When one of your good buddies from Alabama is your wide receiver, and he's being flanked by the highest paid wide receiver in the NFL right now, who specifically chose to come to Miami over taking a slight little hometown discount to stay with his buddy Patrick Mahomes, you sign the best overall free agent in free agency, which Teron Armstead was the number one ranked free agent in all of free agency. You bring in Mike McDaniel, you still have solid pieces on the defensive end with Byron Jones and Xavier Howard and Jerome Baker. And there really isn't any excuse for this team to pull it together and be successful. I mean, maybe the offensive line with all their brand new pieces might not pull it together with Connor Williams playing the center position, which as a Cowboy fan, I'm very familiar with Connor Williams. We'll see how that works out for them. But if Liam Eikenberg can pull it together, there's a lot of ifs this team could potentially be a terrifying team to face off against sometime for January this season. But if Tua isn't able to succeed, then obviously the Miami Dolphins would have tremendous incentive to try to find a rookie quarterback in the 2023 NFL draft. After all, if you're in a situation where Tua doesn't seem to be your guy right around the time where Tua needs to get paid and you're going to move on from Tua, you could get yourself a brand new quarterback with a very low salary and continue building super teams around them. And maybe at some point or another, you strike gold. But to be honest, I don't think that's going to happen. I actually think Tua is going to break out. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about all this. What? How do you think Tua is going to be able to finish this season? Aside from that, I'm your boy, Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.